ongoing monitoring and management. The rollout of your KPI dashboard is just the start. The dashboard is only effective when embedded in management processes and decisions throughout the year. First, someone needs to build and distribute the dashboards. This is where KPI software provides value. KPI software can produce and distribute data very efficiently. Data visualization software can also produce and distribute dashboards efficiently, but may not connect to outside apps as easily. You may need a staff data analyst or a freelancer to build dashboards with data visualization tools. Spreadsheets are the least expensive software to purchase, but also the least efficient for building and distributing dashboards. Most people can manually update simple spreadsheet dashboards. More complex spreadsheets with connections to outside data sources may take a data analyst or freelancer. Many dashboards are just numbers and graphs. This works if the dashboard user can interpret the numbers to understand their significance. It also means everyone would agree on the implication of the numbers. That second assumption about agreement on implications and the action that needs to be taken is rarely true. Once company leaders decide on implications and actions, those actions need to be communicated to the people in the company who will implement the action. A commentary section on dashboards can summarize these steps of interpretation, implication, and action. Commentary helps other employees, owners, and boards understand the implications of ongoing metric levels. If action is needed, the person accountable for the metric works with others to assess the implications and actions needed. Accountability makes clear who must start the process to address the implication of a metric. No accountability causes inaction because each person thinks it's someone else's job to fix the metric. And we're all so busy, we don't have time to deal with it if we don't think it's our problem. Many times, the step between interpretation and implication requires research. KPI software and data visualization software make research easier than spreadsheets. Data visualization software is especially good at allowing you to drill into detailed numbers and look at data from different dimensions or perspectives. On the other hand, spreadsheets are likely okay for small companies because researching data is less difficult in smaller or simpler companies. The person who is accountable for the metric may not be the person who does the research. An owner or CEO can often delegate research to staff. In larger companies, leaders from one department may need resources from another department for research. My finance and accounting staff were often asked to help leaders research metrics data. The company must have agreements for leaders to get the research staff help they need from others. Something I've run into is when a company has an unusual or an extraordinary event that radically impacts a metric. Should that extraordinary item be removed from the metric? For example, I worked in banking. We had a period of rapid growth at one company. This put pressure on our capital and liquidity. To mitigate that risk, we sold loans. Those loan sales triggered significant gains. Instead of earning steady profits on those loans over their lives, we got those profits all at once in the game. Were the gains extraordinary gains that should be excluded from the net income metric? A case could be made to exclude them because we just accelerated profits from liquidity mitigation, not increasing profits from an improvement in core operations. A counter argument is that the gains were part of what the metric measured. It becomes a subjective, slippery slope to start adding or subtracting things from the metric. The stakes are high when people's compensation is impacted by the metrics. That leads us to a massive metric management decision. Should compensation be tied to metrics? I'll cover that in the next lesson.